Welcome. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to worship on Sunday, November 1st for Lakehead's Lutheran Church. Uh, this is All Saints Sunday, so we'll be remembering all our fellow saints who have died in the past year. And I, along those lines, I just want to let you know we have one new saint to recognize this morning. If, if you hadn't seen, Christine Thompson passed away on Friday. And for those of you that don't know, Christine Thompson was the daughter of Lee and Marge Thompson, who were charter members of Lake Edge and uh, served here for many, many faithful years. Uh, this morning we'll be having communion, and you'll take your communion cup out, and on the bottom is the bread. Make sure you serve that first, and then turn it over, and once you have the bread out, and take that, turn it over, and open up the wine. And uh, in your kits you also have uh, hand sanitizer, and you're welcome to drop those off at the basket on the way out, and we'll re-sanitize those, refill them, and, and use them again for the next outdoor worship. Uh, thanks also for wearing our masks and social distancing today. Uh, I recognize that's not exactly Lake Edge Lutheran Church uh, and the fellowship that we enjoy together uh, with all our hugs, but uh, that's where we are today. Um, also a reminder that outdoor worship will continue. Uh, we've had rain, we've had wind and cold. We'll see what November 29th brings at 1130. And then also we're planning on December 24th, Christmas Eve, that's a Thursday, and we'll have some uh, a couple services perhaps during the day. So I think that'll be fun. And, and uh, uh, Bob has uh, graciously agreed to do those outdoor worships as well. So I think the David Bergeron and uh, former Bishop uh, George Carlson got the better end of that of uh, doing the <laughs> indoor worship, but thanks to Bob for being the hearty soul to, to do our outdoor worship services, so we appreciate that very much. One reminder, the Young at Heart dinner obviously can't be held this year, uh, but they're instead having uh, the people 70 and over create a video, and if you don't know how to do that, get a hold of Mary Graper or others of us, or a daughter, a granddaughter, grandson, whatever, and, and uh, do that on your phone and send it in, and we're going to uh, create a, a special greeting for people. And then finally, a reminder about the annual meeting that will be Sunday, December 13th at 11 a.m. via Zoom, and that link was in the dialogue this month and also in the weekly reminder. So very much welcome this morning uh, to our sunshiny day versus rain last time, and a very Great thanks to uh, the Most Reverend Bob Voss for leading us in worship this morning. The Most Reverend Bob Voss is wondering <laughs> what got into him when he agreed to, to do three outdoor services. I just had a flashback. The flashback was to a Christmas Eve service, I don't know, 20 years ago. Uh, I dressed up like John the Baptist, and I came out of the back room, and I had long hair, and I had a robe, and I decided, well, it wouldn't be authentic if I wore my glasses. So I took them off, and I started the sermon and realized, hey, this is great. I don't even know who I'm looking at. I can point fingers at anybody. You brood of vipers. <laughs> well, I can do it today, too, because I don't know who the heck is out here today. <laughs> You're all covered up. Um... It's good to be here this morning, and I'd like to begin this day remembering our baptism, that day when all of us uh, were called by God into God's family as, as brothers and sisters with promises, promises that God would be with us now and forever. So let us begin remembering our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On our pilgrimage of faith, in a changing and uncertain world, we do not walk alone. The Lord is with us. We remember all those who taught us faith, that cloud of martyrs whose example burns bright in our memory. God of grace, by whose love the world exists, show us your face once again and reveal to us all your glory. The Lord be with you. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. 
we keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who cry out in need. And through his death and resurrection, God has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment. And to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Morning. Morning. The first reading is from Revelation chapter 7. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white? Where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The Gospel today is from Matthew chapter 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they are comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are prosecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For the same, in the same way they persecuted the prophets who came before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. question I am asking this morning is what, on, what is on your mind? I can well imagine there is a lot on the minds of our young children and I hope as adults we are taking the time to listen to them. When I was a child at this time of the year I began wishing and hoping for the big snowfall. I loved it. When mom helped me put on my snow pants, my boots, coat, scarf, gloves, and hat, it sent me out to play. Building snow forts, and when there was a lot of snow, snow caves. Throwing snowballs with my neighborhood friends. Sledding, tobogganing, ice skating. Making snow angels in the front lawn. Wonderful memories. This morning, I'd like to ask the children who are at this worship, most of whom, I guess all of whom, are at home right now. <laughs> this morning, I'd like to ask you after this worship, 
with your parents to make a snowflake. It's really not a very difficult process. All you need is a square piece of paper. The instructions are to fold it three times, so you can see the camera there, in the form of a triangle once, fold it again twice, and once again, three times. And then with the help of your mom or dad, get one of those safety scissors, and then you cut wherever you want to cut on all three edges of the triangle. Any kind of shape you want, circles, squares, rectangles, diamonds. You unfold when you're done, and voila! Oh, look what happens. You've got a snowflake. Consider the snowflake, and consider the scientific truth that in all the world, in all that snow that falls, every single snowflake is different. The ice crystals form in so many ways there are no two snowflakes alike. Consider that if God makes every snowflake unique and special, how much more you, yes, you, are special and loved by God. So that when you wake up in the morning, one of these days ahead, and you look out the window and you see that it is snowing, I hope you'll remember the snowflake and remember how special you are and how much you are loved by God. It was really cold, I was gonna stop right there and go on to communion. <laughs> but it's not, I'm pretty comfortable. You're sitting out there in the wind, it's probably a little different. Um, I did get a few instructions from a few people, you know, not your terribly long sermon, Bob, today. <laughs> it's going to be cold out there. <laughs> Sisters and brothers in Christ, partners in the daily ministry of the gospel, grace, peace, love, and power be yours this day. What is on your mind this morning? Perhaps it was the weather. Do you know that I have been writing in sermons and preaching now for 49 years, and this is the first time I'm wearing long underwear. <laughs> Today is All Saints Sunday, a day when we remember those who died in faith from our community. And it's so good to have them on our mind, and I was so saddened to hear about Christine this morning. What a special, unique, gifted person she was. But I know I'm thinking about my mom, too. I miss her so much. I miss Marcy's mom and dad. And today, I continue to miss my brother-in-law, David. As I drove to church this morning, there's a billboard on Highway 51 Stoughton Road that asks this question of every passerby. Where are you going? To heaven or to hell? And there's a phone number if you want to get the answer. Well, I can tell you that that is a question that is not on my mind this morning. First of all, the biblical concept of heaven and hell was created when scholars of the time believed that the world was flat and that below the earth was hell and above the blue skies was a place called heaven. This cosmology is archaic. Any elementary school student can tell you that the earth is one galaxy in one galaxy and there are millions of galaxies in our universe. So this concept of up and down is not very useful anymore. Further, Jesus was concerned about how we treated each other in this world. Far more concerned than he was about the next world. Paul's clear conviction 
that whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's, is all I need to know. So I'm not concerned about the salvation of my soul this morning. I'm much more concerned about the salvation of God's creation and the relationship between all the peoples of the world, and especially now in such a divided country, the relationships in families and towns and cities. When I was in high school, I had the glorious good blessing to be born in the 60s. The Beatles were all the rage, but so was folk music, and I fell in love with it. I joined a folk club in high school. We met once a week in the band room and taught each other songs. It wasn't long then I formed a folk trio. Two guitars, a banjolin, a mandolin, and a harmonica. We called ourselves Ted, Dave, and Bob. <laughs> Guess which one I was. Oh boy. Our repertoire included songs by the Kingston Trio, the Chad Mitchell Trio, Peter, Paul, and Mary, the Weavers, the Smothers Brothers, Bob Dylan, and a California folk group known as the We Five. One Hit Wonders. Their hit song, You Were On My Mind, challenged the Beatles for first place on the Top 40 hit list. It was a fun song to sing and play. I wonder if any of you old-timers even remember it. One hand. I was going to sing it for you, but that's not very good. But the line goes like this. When I woke up this morning, you were on my mind. Yes, you were on my mind. And then it goes, oh, I got troubles. Whoa, whoa. I got worries. Whoa, whoa. I got Oh, that was a fun song to sing. And it was an easy song to relate to. Because in 1966, you might remember, there was a very unpopular war in Asia. As a high school young man, I faced the draft board. Political leaders were being assassinated. There were civil rights protests, racial unrest, violent clashes with the police, hunger and homelessness. We had a lot on our minds when we woke up in the morning back in the 60s. But the point is, what's on our mind this morning? What was on your mind when you woke up? What are your troubles? What are your worries? What are your wounds that you bring before God today? Actually, as I thought about it, they don't seem much different from the 60s. Except today you and I are living with a global pandemic, a state being ravaged by COVID-19, and the very real possibility of global extinction if we don't act right now, and a presidential election on Tuesday where both sides have proclaimed it's the most important election of your lifetime. What's on your mind this morning? Well, what word does God have for us? Well, the word we have today that all of us have listened together to is the Beatitudes. That word means a state of bliss, a state of well-being. With all the troubles, worries, and wounds we have brought with us this morning, it is God's intention that even in the midst of all of that, <clears throat> we still can find a peace that passes all human understanding. The Beatitudes begin what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. And this is what I know about the Sermon on the Mount. It's not a sermon. It's a teaching. Jesus sat down. He did not stand up. When rabbis sat down, people would sit at their feet and listen to the teacher's interpretation of scripture. The teaching did not 
literally happened, literally happened at one time. That's something else I know from biblical study. It's actually a compilation of many of Jesus' teachings over the years, put together after he died. I have personally traveled to the spot on the edge of the hill on the Sea of Galilee where the event, the Sermon on the Mount, was to have taken place. And I would like to believe, even though I know that never really happened all at one time, Jesus probably did sit on that mountain at one time and on that place and with his disciples around him, teaching them the truths that we find in the Sermon on the Mount. And finally, the last thing I really know about the Sermon on the Mount is that it was the favorite scripture of some of the greatest religious and social justice leaders of all time, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, and Gandhi. As I read the Beatitudes for the umpteenth time, I noticed something, you know, this always happens when you read scripture, I noticed something I hadn't noticed before. There is one Beatitude where Jesus comments. All the others, he just, this is a blessing, this is a blessing. But blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and other kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Okay, that's, that's, that, that's a state of bliss, right? And then Jesus goes on. You can see it just looking in your, in your bulletin. You'll see how much longer that is. He comments on that. Rejoice and be glad. Really? I got troubles, worries. I got wounds, man. And Jesus says, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets before you. Remember when Jesus lived, he lived under the mighty arm of the Roman Empire. When the Gospel of Matthew was written, the Jewish people heard this sermon for the first time, lived under the mighty arm of the Roman Empire. The empire proclaimed over and over again that the emperor was God, the emperor is the savior, the emperor, the emperor was the Lord of life. But Jesus refused to acknowledge that truth, and he was crucified. The people that followed, that proclaimed Jesus as Lord and Savior, and who chose to live by the values of the kingdom of God, those people were persecuted by the government, persecuted like the prophets before them that spoke the truth about a loving and a very just God. Persecuted. The people listening for the first time, they had great problems, persecuted, and some of them were being tortured to death. When the people listening to Jesus' teaching woke up in the morning, they, like us, had plenty of troubles, worries, and wounds to bind. Jesus shares in the Beatitudes that even though this is true, that a sense of peace, of well-being, even bliss can be found in times of trouble when one recognizes the power of the love of God, even in the worst of circumstances. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians quoted an early Christian hymn, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. When we wake up in the morning, let us wake up with Jesus on our mind and Jesus' passion for God's love for all the world. Most of my ministry these days have been with grandchildren. I love it. I had the opportunity to watch the movie Frozen 2 with my granddaughter Kyla last week. There was a profound message in that movie that I did not expect. When the world of this tiny kingdom was falling apart, when the lives of Elsa and Anna and Sven and the entire kingdom were full of troubles and worries and wounds, Olaf, the magical snowman, sings, do the next right thing. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
Let us strive to follow the wisdom of Jesus this morning, to wake up in the morning with our minds on Jesus, and then go and act, go and do, go and be, go and do the next right thing. Let us honor and respect the poor. Let us mourn with those who have experienced loss in their lives. Let us be kind to all. Let us seek justice for all. Be merciful to all. Fill our hearts with grace and beauty that still exists. And seek peace in all of our relationships. Indeed, no matter what our worries and our troubles and wounds, we are blessed to know that we are loved by God no matter what. We are blessed. We are blessed to be. We are blessed to be here. We are blessed to be here now. We are blessed to be here now together. We are blessed to know that there is nothing in this world that has been, that is, or will be that can ever separate us from the love of God. Amen. I'd like to invite you, for those that want to and can even still do it, if your legs are strong enough to stand and get to move around and stand your feet a little bit as uh, we sing our hymn of the day. It's coming. We, we have a little transition to make here. Oh, here, it's ready here. The guitar has to be kept inside because it will go out of tune in a hurry. Don't worry, it's already out of tune. standing for the prayers of the church. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifice as witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry out our faith to new people and places around us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our, train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. In particular today, we pray for those who fight fires in Washington, Oregon, California, and Colorado. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Lord, in your mercy. 
Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution, and those who suffer illness of body, mind, or spirit. Shape our vision of the saints to match Jesus' vision. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. We lift up today Terry Jackson, Eugene Hedrick, Marilyn Jarrett, Karen Shockey, Dick Sung, Bill Gensko, the family of Marianne Jarrett, and the family of Christine Thompson, and all those on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church, in particular as we enter our, or we complete our call process for a new pastor for Lake Edge Lutheran Church. Bless that person that we're seeking to find and help us to find the right one. We, we uh, call on you to be with us throughout this call process and through this new year when we welcome our members back to our church sanctuary together in love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered by yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year since our last All Saints Day. Robert Okers. Julius Morgan. Sybil Gilbert. Paul Thompson. Ann Ahern. Nancy Schultz, Carolyn Erickson, Marianne Jarrett, Christine Thompson, and those we name now silently and aloud. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the meal. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again after supper, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this so you remember me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may now open the bread side of your communion container. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ. Flipping the container over carefully, remove the cover. Take and drink, for this is the blood of Christ shed for you for your sins. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this very simple meal, you have actually set a big banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. Give us glad and generous hearts 
as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are all made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for daily service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad even in these difficult days. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, if you can, you know, this is a song that's hard to sing, sitting down. Uh, you may want to stand for the, uh, the sending hymn.